Hello again, everyone. I'm Dr. George Simon, and welcome to another edition of the new Character Matters program. This is the podcast where we talk about what I consider to be the defining issue of our time, the character crisis that we've been in for some time now, and that affects every aspect of our lives. And today I'm going to be continuing a discussion on the importance of revering truth, uh, especially in relationships. I'm going to be talking especially about relationship dishonesty, because dishonesty in relationships has been the demise of so many intimate partnerships uh, that I can hardly count them. Uh, in my years of counseling, this is what I found to be the truth most of the time, uh, that folks have such irreverence uh, for the truth about themselves and for the truth about their attitudes and feelings toward other people, uh, that they're basically fraudulent in their relationships, and such relationships are doomed to fail eventually, because eventually the truth will out, uh, both about the nature of a relationship and about the nature of someone's character. The truth will out eventually, uh, and when it does, generally speaking, uh, that's when a whole heck of a lot of pain occurs in a relationship as it unravels. So let me begin by uh, explaining what I mean about dishonesty in relationships. Uh, I'm going to give some special attention to manipulative relationships, uh, that being, of course, the subject of my very first book, uh, in Sheep's Clothing, Understanding and Dealing uh, with Manipulative People. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about that as well, but uh, I want to speak first to general dishonesty in relationships and how such dishonesty characterizes so many relationships these days. You know, these days, folks enter relationships or form relationships for all kinds of reasons besides healthy ones. And so much of the time, folks are not very honest with either themselves or with their potential relationship partner uh, about the nature of their interest and about the nature of their very relationship. Now, last week, I mentioned that we are inherently spiritual beings having a very human experience at our core. At our core is the very loving energy that is responsible for our existence. And because that same energy resides in each one of us, at that level, we are all the same. But it is natural for us as human beings to form an ego over time. And uh, ego is an interesting uh, creature in and of itself, because we have to have it in order to survive and prosper in this world. This is not a hospitable place. It's full of challenges, and uh, it's full of things to be wary of. And we have to learn to cope. We have to learn to get along. We have to learn the rules of the game, so to speak. And uh, we can have too little ego. There are individuals who lack what psychologists call ego strength. In other words, they, uh, uh, they tend to be so unsure of themselves and have constructed uh, such a weak sense of who they are as an operator in the world uh, that uh, it's too easy for other uh, more forceful, more confident individuals to, to kind of run the show for them in a relationship. Uh, they become too easily dependent. Uh, so we need our egos to function. There's no question about that. However, most of the time, our ego is built on pretense. Now, what I mean by that, uh, in so, some uh, 
theorists and some philosophers prefer to call the ego the false self. Uh, I I'm not sure I really like that term because the ego is not inherently false. It's something we need. We need a sense of who we are as an operator in the world. But it's not our truer, bigger self. So um, to call it false, I suppose, has some truth to it. But I don't think it's accurate to refer to the ego as our false self, but rather our smaller self. It's the self that we construct to get us through this crazy mixed up world of ours. And it's necessary. So once again, ego is not evil. Some describe ego as an acronym for edging God out. In other words, uh, where ego is, uh, especially when ego is present uh, in its most fierce uh, and dominant form, uh, that great energy within us that some people call God, uh, that uh, is at the very core of our existence, uh, can't really break through. But a healthy ego is in partnership. A healthy ego has embraced the other commandments, realizes that it's a part of something very big. That's the first commandment. And that it's been granted something that it's inherently indebted for, and therefore the accepts the fact that there are no entitlements and acts in humble gratitude, and then has a balanced sense of self and self-worth. It understands where our worth comes from and is not uh, vulnerable to unhealthy dependencies or pompous uh, self-pumping up. So a healthy ego is in service, in participation with that bigger something. A healthy ego understands that it's not all about us, that it behooves us to be genuine and to serve something bigger. That's what a healthy ego is all about. But it's easy to lose sight of the fact that it's not the bigger, truer us. It's easy to build our life around the image that we have constructed for ourselves. And that's what occurs too often in manipulative relationships, dishonest relationships, where folks are so about the game of what we call impression management that they only present the image that they want folks to see. And uh, some folks are very adept at presenting a, a very appealing image, but it doesn't tell the whole story. And in the most manipulative relationships, this is always the case. In the most manipulative relationships, the person's image is everything, as the old commercial used to say. And they're adept at using a whole lot of different tactics to maintain that image and to uh, keep you basically in the dark about who they really are and what they are really up to. Now, some folks are very gifted at this art of impression management. There are some folks who have the skill, who have certain uh, characteristics that make them quite amiable, quite likable. Uh, they seem easygoing. They relate with ease. 
they have enough confidence in themselves that uh, they, and enough uh, skill in uh, what we call charm that they make friends easily. Um, and they are good at soliciting regard, positive regard from folks, uh, because they seem to be so genuinely caring. Now, how do you tell the difference between someone who is so likable and seems caring from someone who is genuinely caring? who is truly sincere. Well, most of the time, unfortunately, in our character and period times, you find this out long after it's too late. At the beginning of the relationship, you're taken in by somebody's charm and charisma. You don't find out who they really are until later. They've been so good at the craft of impression management that they've created this image that seems so wonderful uh, and then over time, the guard comes down and the real person comes forward. Their real values begin to show. And that's what leaves so many folks wondering in a relationship seemingly predestined to fall apart, how they ever got so bamboozled in the first place, I, get, I can't tell you how many folks I've counseled in relationships who tell me, what happened to that person that I married? I thought I knew this person. I thought I knew this man or this woman. Who is he or she? Now that the wool has been lifted from my eyes and I see more clearly, and now that the facade has been dropped, from their act, uh, I see clearly who they are, but you know, I've, I've had all this time and energy invested and I feel like a fool. So we live in times, unfortunately, where, where because of the inherent dishonesty that folks bring to relationships, you know, as I mentioned before, there was a commercial that Andre Agassi did for Nikon cameras where he said image is everything. And for a lot of people, they live like that. Way. And they're very good at it. They're very good at presenting a facade. Now, sometimes, sometimes it is for predatory purposes. For example, folks like Bernie Madoff, your archetypal psychopath or sociopath or interpersonal predator. These folks are quite capable of convincing you that they want only your welfare, when in fact, all they really want to do in the case of Madoff is raid your bank account, take your life savings to enrich their own uh, selves or, or line their own pockets. So some folks can be that extreme, but other folks are on the spectrum of impression management, and they're not so, uh, so severe in their exploitation intent. But nonetheless, they may want something from you that they're not really honest either with themselves about or with you about. And so they put on a front. They turn on the charm. They wine and dine you. They seduce you. Many times the approach is through ego massage. You know, folks with twisted egos themselves are really good at recognizing individuals who have impaired egos, uh, folks who don't have great opinions of themselves. Their self-esteem is... Uh, is weak. And folks who uh, have a quiet glibness and confidence in their ability, uh, capacity to charm, uh, can recognize this in a minute. And so they turn on the charm. And they engage in, what, in the art of what we call ego massage. 
They will make you feel great about yourself. They will tell you how wonderful you are, how their life didn't even have meaning before they met you. And uh, I know it sounds like I'm trashing all uh, love affairs. I'm not. I'm just saying that in our day and time, you have to be careful because there are folks out there who know just what to say and just what to do. But their intentions, their genuine intentions, are not noble. They have a purpose. Maybe they see something in you, your value added to them. But as I've said in many articles that you can find on my blog, interest or desire is not the same thing as regard. This is so important to realize. Interest and desire does not equal regard. Just because somebody sees something in you that they like and would surely like to possess may flatter you. It may well flatter you, but just because they see that and just because they want a piece of it doesn't mean that they have any regard for you or have the capacity to commit to you and your welfare over the long term. It's so easy to get charmed by charm. I've written about charm offensives and the offensive nature of charm. And I've written about the, the charm alarm and how it sometimes fails to go off. But these kinds of pretense are a form of dishonesty that bespeaks the disturbed character's complete disregard for the truth their complete inability to relate in a genuine manner. Now, neurotic individuals, the folks who have such uh, a well-developed conscience and a great deal of conscientiousness, perhaps over-conscientiousness, and are riddled with fears and insecurities, uh, they may present a facade because they're terrified of exposing their true self and being vulnerable in this cold, cruel world. But more and more these days, in our character-disturbed world, impaired characters hide their real self because they don't really want you to know who they really are and what they're really up to. They don't really want you to know what designs they have on you. So, for example, somebody might enter a relationship simply because with you because simply because they find you uh, very uh, uh, desirable from a physical attraction standpoint, and that's all they really see in you, and they don't really care to know much more about you, nor do they care to um, to develop any more meaningful relationship with you. So when they're through using you for whatever uh, purposes they have, they're pretty much done with you. But you don't find this out until after the fact. So these days, you have to be very skeptical, unfortunately. We live in character-impaired times. And we live in times where folks have played so fast and loose with the truth for so long and are so used to it, are so desensitized to all the egregious lying that goes on, uh, that um, they do this with facility, that with great ease, they present an image that works for them, gets them what they want, but doesn't tell the real story. Now, I mentioned that uh, your archetypal manipulators are also very skilled, very adept at this impression management uh, capability. 
That's why so many of them are just like the proverbial wolf in sheep's clothing, which is why I titled my book uh, on the subject the way I did. Some folks know that they are all about the business of wanting control, wanting to dominate, wanting to have their way, and feeling perfectly entitled to do so. They can't bring into a relationship genuine regard for another or genuine uh, love, a desire to work for on the behalf of another and build the life. They're used to having their way, and they're used to uh, using certain tactics to get their way. So while they may be able to present a facade of civility and charm, what they really want in the relationship is everything that they want to dominate, to control, to have their way, and they use certain tactics to get it. Tactics that they know will work primarily with the conscientious. One thing that impaired characters know for sure, folks who are deficient in conscience, deficient in conscientiousness, who only care about what they want and getting it. One thing they know for sure is that folks who do have a conscience, who are very conscientious, will be swayed by certain tactics, especially the two chief ones that I outline in my book in Sheep's Clothing, Shame and Guilt. Just try. Just try to make the shameless character <laughs> change their behavior because you shame them. But just try the re to make the remorseless character who does the same thing over and over again, who professes remorse but <laughs> continues to do the same thing, just try to really affect the change in their behavior by guilting them. It doesn't work. Those tactics only work with individuals who are shame sensitive, who don't, who care about who they are as a person, and with persons capable of genuine remorse or feeling genuine guilt, who care about what they have done. The tactics of guilting and shaming will work on such a person a person with a well-developed conscience who cares, who doesn't want to injure, and who doesn't want to be the kind of person uh, that wantonly uses and abuses other people. So if you want to keep that kind of person in mind, shaming and guilting are two great ways to do it. Now, when the disturbed character uses those tactics, they know what they're doing. They're keeping the conscientious person in line by using tactics that they know work. But they're not being genuine, either about who they are as a character or what they're up to. And this is the supreme importance of reverence for the truth. We are great deceivers, not only of others, but of ourselves. And the most disturbed uh, characters among us are the most egregious deceivers. They are at the core liars. They're not honest with themselves. Well, who they are and what they're up to. And they're certainly not honest with anybody else. And it's a spectrum of disturbance that we're dealing with. From the most egregious predators like a Bernie Madoff, to the person who tells you that they think you hung the moon 
at the beginning of a relationship and then throws you away when they're done exploiting you. There's a spectrum of character disturbance. But these days, character disturbance is the phenomenon of our time. There are fewer and fewer and fewer of the ultra-conscientious among us, and many, many more of the exploiters, users, and abusers among us. It's been happening for some time now. And the worst thing about the situation is that when decent people go for help, many times, as I've mentioned before, they experience what we call therapy-induced trauma because some helping professionals just don't get it. Not only about how some people operate and what's seriously deficient in their character, but also how to manage that, what to do about it. And I'm going to have uh, some podcasts in the future about that. So, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, this particular commandment about revering the truth and its power to grow and set people free. I'm going to be talking about it over several podcasts because it's really an important topic. Um, but I wanted to uh, at least begin the discussion of how dishonesty in relationships inevitably takes its toll. And I wanted to emphasize how important it is in our day and time to really do some character vetting on the front end of a relationship and to take with a grain of salt the things presented to you, to do your homework. Actions speak much louder than words, and some folks are really smooth talkers. They know just what to say and sometimes even what to do. But generally, the history tells the story. And we'll have more to say about that in our future uh, program. Now, I wanted to make uh, mention of the upcoming live broadcast. The first Wednesday in October will be, uh, uh, it'll be the first, I'm sorry, uh, YouTube live uh, broadcast. It's the second live broadcast. Uh, podcast that we'll be doing. It'll be available immediately after the podcast in podcast form. Uh, but because it will be a YouTube live event, uh, and I'll have the time fixed very shortly, and I'll, I'll put that up on this YouTube channel as well as uh, on the blog. Um, because it will be a live event, uh, I'll be able to take your questions in real time and we'll be able to have a conversation. So um, I invite you also to uh, mosey on over to the blog at uh, drgeorgesimon.com. That's D-R-G-E-O-R-G-E-S-I-M-O-N.com, uh, where I'll be talking about relationship uh, deception uh, in the uh, article today. And uh, also to avail yourself of my books, uh, available readily on Amazon in multiple formats, including audiobooks, In Sheep's Clothing, Understanding and Dealing with Manipulative People, Character Disturbance, The Phenomenon of Our Age, uh, The Judas Syndrome, and How Did We End Up Here? And uh, as we roll into final edits for my upcoming book, Essentials for the Journey, Embracing and Living the Ten Commandments of Character. I'll have more information for you shortly. It will be most, most likely an Amazon CreateSpace publication. So as soon as the edits are finished uh, and the button is pushed, so to speak, um, it will be available as a print-on-demand uh, edition uh, from Amazon. So uh, I'll have more information for you on that uh, in the very near future. Once again, 
Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the new Character Matters. I'm Dr. George Simon. Take care.